what you want to do, be, and have, and what your ideal life will look like. One of the things that you need to do as soon as you have decided what your purpose is and what you want to do with your life, what your goals are, is obviously make the decision to do those things. And there are two ways to find out if someone really made a decision. If you really made a decision, I will know because of what you spend your money on and where you spend your time. We have an idiom, an expression in English, and it says, put your money where your mouth is. And when we say this, it means if you say, if what you say is what you really believe, you will spend your money on it. You will do things to show me, don't tell me, show me that that's really important to you. So if you've made a decision, for example, to learn English, you have, because I can see you put your time into it. You're here in class, right? Maybe you spend money on um, books to learn English or audio tapes or other things like that. So your money and your time prove that you have made a decision. Okay, so we talked about our goals and it's important to have goals, but you can't have them until you know what your purpose is, what you want to do, be, and have, and what your ideal life will look like three years from now, five years from now. So the second G, and today is brought to you by the letter G. <laughs> the second G is, and you know this because we've talked about this. This is a secret to having your best life now. Give. Remember we talked about the closed fist. Make a fist right now. Remember we said if your fist is closed, can anyone put anything in your hand? Nothing. No, the closed fist cannot receive. Say it with me. The closed fist cannot receive. You have to give, and then you can get. That's supposed to be a fist. The closed fist cannot receive. Okay. Okay. So what can you give? Well, you can give your time, right? You can volunteer and help others. You can give your money. If there's an organization you want to represent, you can give your money. What about a smile? Maria is always smiling. She gives people a smile, and it brightens people's day. So your time, your money, a smile. How about your talents? Remember we said, I am a resource. We give our talents. And remember I told you that I'm a good singer. So when my friend got married, she said, please sing at my wedding. So what did I say? Did I say, no, I'm not going to do that? What did I say? Yes, and I stood there next to the bride and the groom, and I said, do you want to hear a little bit? When I fall in love, it will be forever, for I'll never fall in love. And I gave one of my talents. I gave a resource to her. So you can give time, money, a smile, like Maria always smiles at people, a talent. Another thing you can give is a random <coughs> act of kindness. When I was in high school, I was about 16 years old, and I was at a new school, I didn't have many friends, and I missed the bus. So to walk home took more than an hour. So I'm walking, and I'm walking, and a friend pulls up to one of my classmates, and his mother says, hey, and he says, hey, we can give you a ride. Would you like a ride? My mom can give you a ride. And it was that one little act of kindness that made my day. I had no friends in a new school, and he was a classmate that offered an act of kindness. So we can give a lot of things. Not, it's not just about giving money. It's about giving of yourself. Now, the one we haven't talked about dig deeper into your happiness and that means going further it's not you're not really digging right idioms aren't actual it's representing it so when I say dig deeper it means what more than just giving let's really get into what can make us happy and achieve all our goals and it also begins with the letter G can you guess what it is no guesses
going to blow your mind as it did me. But right now, let's just get out a piece of paper and just for one minute, write down things that you are grateful for. Go ahead and begin, just start to write, make a list. What am I grateful for? What am I thankful for? of an iceberg and this is the part you see above the water and this is the part of the iceberg that's under the water so when we say in English that's just the tip of the iceberg we mean that's just a tiny bit of what we're talking about so the list you just wrote about things you're grateful for that's just the tip of the iceberg this little part there's so much more to this and I can't wait for you to really get into this because it's going to blow your mind if you're anything like me. So here's what happens. I'm a very happy person, right? Why am I so happy all the time? Because you're doing your job. Because yes, your life. because my job is to give. My passion is to give. I love to empower people to think and to learn to communicate. And in this case, you're learning to communicate in English. So that's my passion, that's what makes me happy, and that, and that is giving. Well, there was a time in my life that I was very sad. And I was sad when my father died, but this time I'm talking about I was even more sad than that. It was the most sad time in my whole life. And I didn't know what to do. And a friend gave me a little book about gratitude, and it changed my life. It helped me to become happy again. So that's why I'd love to share it with you, and I hope that it blows your mind the way it blew my mind. So what I did was I got a little notebook, and every morning I would wake up and I would write 10 things that I was grateful for. So it started out with little things like, well, I was remember I was very sad. Well, at least uh, the sheets on the bed are very soft, so I'm thankful for that. That's really number one here. <laughs> soft sheets feel good. <laughs> and number two, soft pillow. <laughs> so sometimes when you can't find what you're thankful for, just look for things right around you and you'll find things. Then I started being thankful for people in my life. One day I wrote 10 things I was thankful for all about my daughter. I wrote that I was thankful that she's a happy little girl and that she likes to play outside. I wrote, I was thankful that my daughter is musical and plays the piano and the flute. I wrote that I was thankful that she was a thinker and she is aware of things in life at only age 14. I wrote that um, I was thankful that I have a good relationship with her, that she has good friends, etc. And then the next day I wrote about my other daughter, 10 things I'm grateful for. And then the next day, my husband, and then I wrote about my health. Because sometimes we just say, oh yes, I'm healthy. And the only time we're thankful is when we get sick. And then all of a sudden we're like, boy, it's really important to have good health, right? But why not be thankful for our health all the time? Why not wake up in the morning and say, today I'm happy that my lungs work. Some people cannot breathe without a machine. Or wake up and look at your hands and say, today I'm thankful that I have hands. I can hug my child. I can pick things up. Um, there's an expression, I once was sad I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. I had no shoes, but he had no feet. Suddenly, you're happy about your feet even if you don't have shoes. So I came up with a daily gratitude list that, please take one and pass them down, that gives you ideas of things you can be grateful for. So what I do now when I wake up in the morning, after writing uh, an entire book of things I'm grateful for that I can read and reread, I wrote down some little words to remind me. So what I do is I wake up in the morning and I take this and I say, hmm, okay, people, and it's also important to say why, not just what you're happy about, but why. So I might say, okay, people, um, my husband, I'm so happy and grateful 
for my husband because he makes me laugh every day. And then it's important to say in your mind or out loud, thank you, thank you, thank you, because it's expressing gratitude. Um, additionally, I, I'm thankful for my spirit because I am a strong person who was able to persevere when I had a very sad time in my life. And then my body. One day I might be thankful for my heart. I have a good, strong heart. I can run and not get tired. <laughs> uh, where I live. Are you thankful that you live here? Yes, many people come to America because it's a safe place, because there's opportunity. The world, are you thankful for all the countries that are not at war, that are in peace? Are you thankful for the oceans, the beautiful nature that we have all around the world? Sustenance. When's the last time you opened your refrigerator and were thankful that you had food in there? How many people do not have food each day? More people. How about being thankful for people that you don't know? How about waking up and say, I'm sure thankful somebody created electricity so I don't have to use a candle. I'm so happy that somebody built this building, painted these walls so that we could have a place to come to class. Opportunity. I'm so happy I have the opportunity to teach you. And you can say, I'm so happy I have the opportunity to go to class and learn. Something little. I am so happy that there's such a thing as tape. If there was no tape, how would I have put this on this board today? It's a little thing, but I am happy for it. Something big. I am happy that here in Las Vegas, we have all the systems in place, police, firemen, um, teachers, everything we need for the society to run and to function. Uh, something in the past. We don't think of the past too often, but what about being thankful for something in the past? Be thankful for when you were a child, all the money your family spent on you. They bought you clothes, they bought you food, they sent you to school. What about being thankful for something else in the past? Maybe your teachers when you were little. Maybe your government. Maybe um, the fact that you got to go on a vacation when you were little. Be thankful for things in the past. And then finally, something in the future. We talk about picturing your success in your mind. So you can be thankful for something that didn't happen yet. You can say, I am so thankful that one day I will walk up to anybody and I will speak English so fluently they will not know that a few years ago I could not. Right? Now, another thing, do you see how I wrote them down? It's important to write your goals down. You can just say them, but if you really want to go fast and this will blow your mind, you write them down. And the reason is there's something magical about writing things down. I don't know what it is, but there's something magic about it. Years ago, I wrote down my goals and I put the paper away in a drawer and I forgot about it. And then I found the paper like six years later. I'm like, oh, look at my goals from six years ago. And I, oh, I, I achieved that. Oh, I achieved that goal. Everything I wrote down happened. Everything except one thing. I had on there that I wanted a swimming pool. And I said, oh, I didn't get the swimming pool. But one year later, my husband and my daughter and I moved into a house that had a swimming pool. So for one year, we lived in a house with a swimming pool in the backyard. So now I can truly say everything on the list came true. And I didn't even look at it every day. I wrote it down, put it away, and then took it back out and found that there's something magic about writing it down is it all came true true story. All right, now I'm going to read you a poem that I wrote for you because we need to remember our goals, but more importantly, if you give and if you have gratitude 
everything happens for you. Follow these um, seven daily habits that I've given you so that even when I'm not around anymore, you continue to learn. Are you ready for your poem? Never give up on the dreams you hold dear. Picture success and proceed without fear. Keep your good habits, expecting the best, and others will help you to do all the rest. Thank you. Thank you.